In the last episode, we were going through this controller action and we discussed why it might be a good idea to uh, re-implement or refactor that to a Trailblazer operation. And we created a small operation class along with a test. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to copy over the code that we want to refactor into the operation class. And obviously I'm going to make this commented that this will help us to identify what we actually want to do. And from what I see, the first uh, requirement we have is to extract something from the params hash, something that is keyed under blog post. And without too much thinking, I remove or I move this code to a instance method in the operation. We call it extract params or something. And since an operation is a master of code flow and streamlining of business logic, there is an API that allows me to tell Trailblazer, hey, extract params should be the first step we are running in this operation. It's very important to follow the signature that Trailblazer wants me to use because every step method, extract params in this case, has to have an argument chain being composed of the context, which we're gonna discuss in a second, and the double split, which we're gonna discuss in a minute. And I'm jumping back to my operation unit test because in order to run this operation, all the steps associated with it, I have to invoke the call method on the operation. And this is enough to run my test. And obviously it fails with a missing variable params in my operation class, which is this guy. It's really important to understand that we're using an external dependency here. So params is not automatically defined in an operation magically, like it is done in a Rails controller. Params is a variable we need from the outside. And whatever you need from the outside, you have to pass into the operation call. So what I do is I add this params and then some bogus hash as the input. And whatever I pass into the call method when I invoke the operation, will be available through the context object. Yeah, so basically the context object that we get into every method represents what we pass into the operation initially. And what I do here is I just basically extract or assign a new variable params and I get this from context and then I do a hash access params. So this params object will be representing this hash. And in order to understand this a little bit better, I will just add another variable like hello, yo, or something like that. So this variable hello should be available in context and we can check that in our extract params step method. And I will just print it and say context hello or something like that. Yeah, spelling is hard. So when I run my test, we probably get some beautiful print on the command line. Here we are, there is a yo on the command line. So Maybe this illustrates a little bit better that the context object initially represents everything you pass into the operation invocation. So basically the context object is a hash that has all the keys that you pass into the operation. And another beautiful feature of the operation is that you don't have to use the context object to access a variable in it. You can also use a keyword argument like params, for example, and this will automatically read params from the context object and makes it available as a local variable in the method. So that's a Ruby mechanism that we just uh, leverage in Trailblazer. And my advice is always use keyword arguments as we did with params when you want to access variables from the context. It has a lot of benefits. For example, when I forget to pass the um, required keyword, when I invoke the operation, my test will fail and Ruby will tell me what I did wrong. So we're now getting a Ruby uh, argument error missing keyword params and that comes from the um, from the extract params method so that basically tells me oh I forgot to pass params into the operation and that's another Ruby mechanism that makes a lot of sense in combination with Trailblazer. And now that we've discussed keyword arguments uh, do not forget to always add this comma double split thing in the end so that's another Ruby um, mechanism and it basically says I am not interested in any other keyword arguments except for the params one. And because what Trailblazer does is it offers every step method all the variables from context as a keyword argument. And since we only want to have the params keyword, for example, or the params variable, we use double split. So always use this. And if you're interested in this, uh, you should read up on keyword arguments in Ruby because this is all very uh, Ruby generics. 
Okay, now that we understand keyword arguments and variables in the context, let's see if it actually works. So I'm gonna flip back to my original version of the test. I'm gonna remove the hello and just keep in mind that we have this params hash and it has a blog post key and then there is an empty or a blank title in that. And in my extract params method, I wanna see if we actually get this title and the blank string. And what I do is I just puts or just print that blog post params on the terminal. And I do this by running the unit test, obviously. And there we are, title, blank string. So that's exactly what we were expecting in our operation. All right, so we extracted whatever we wanted from the params hash, but just assigning a local variable in a method doesn't do anything. So this will be lost after this step method finishes. So in order to communicate something to the following steps, you have to actually write that to the context object. And I'm using some, like just a key that came to my mind, like my params, and then I say blog post params. So this will make sure that we, that we pass on the extracted hash or actually any kind of data source to the following steps. And that basically means that we finished our first trail operation step. Woohoo!